Hi, welcome students. In this video, we're going to look at uh, just how to work out a number of questions from uh, um, linear momentum and collisions. So the questions will be based on uh, the sheet five from the University of Zambia first year physics. Um, yeah, so the idea here is you've gone through the topic, you've, uh, you've learned something, you know what you're doing, and then this is just a guideline on how some of the concepts you can use to work out uh, these questions. So this is going to be part of the series of questions, uh, a series of videos, sorry. Uh, in this one, we're going to try to work out question three from the theory sheet five, question three, question four. Um, yeah, we're going to work out those two questions. And then from there, we might even do question five, depending on how much time uh, we'll take. Okay, so for those who might not have this tutorial sheet, I'm going to attach the touch file in the description so you can download it from there so that you can, can just follow through. So the idea here is you've tried the questions out and then you just, just want to compare how my approach to working this out. Um, yeah, and then if you have any questions, you can comment them in the description or get in touch with me via email. Okay. Now the question reads, car one is sitting at rest when it, when it was hit from the rear by car two of identical mass. Both cars had their brakes on and they skidded together six meters in the original direction of motion. If the stopping force is 0.7 by the combined weight of the cars, find the approximate speed of car two. Okay, so the, the best thing that we have to do is to have a clear picture of what is happening. So we have the two objects. So this is one car and then this is the other car. So after after collision, we're saying these two get to move some distance, six meters. Okay, now, if this is car one, which was initially addressed, this is car two, which was moving in this direction. Uh, the first thing that we we'll have to do is to conserve momentum. Okay, so for uh, momentum, uh, we're saying M2, V2, this is the initial, plus M1, V1 initial, this must be equivalent to M2 V2 final plus M1 V1 final. But from the information that they're given, we're told that they have identical mass. So implying that M1 is equivalent to M2. So let's just call it M. And apart from that, uh, we're told that K1 is initially addressed, implying that V1 is equals to zero that to make the second term in, on the left hand side to be equal to zero. And apart from that, we're also saying that they get to move together with some velocity for six meters, implying that V2 final is the same as V1 final. So let's just go it here. So if we take this and substitute it back into our equation for conservation of momentum, we now have M V2 initial is equal to and then on the right hand side, uh, we're going to have M V plus M V. So what you should notice straight away from here is um, the masses are going to cancel out since they're the same on each side. I'm just going to include one more step before I cancel out the masses. I'm just going to simplify the right hand side. Okay, so from here now, the masses can cancel out on both sides. Now we notice that the initial velocity of car two is just twice the final velocity of the two objects after collision. Okay, so let's call this our equation one. Okay. Now, what we need to do, we need to find the velocity of the two objects after collision. Then we can use that to find the velocity of car two before collision. Now, how do we do that? we have to use Newton's second law of motion. So from the second law of motion, we're going to get the acceleration. Using that acceleration, we're going to use one of the laws of motion uh, to determine the initial velocity. Since this uh, deceleration will occur on a linear plane, uh, let's assume in a straight line, okay? So we're taught to say that the force, the stopping force acting on this is 0 0.7 multiplying the combined weight. So let me use capital M to be the combined mass times G. So this gives me the combined weight. So we know to say from Newton's second law, this is equivalent to MA. 
I'm using capital M again because we're still talking about the combined weight. So from here, you should note that we're saying 0 0.7 mg is equals to ma. So the masses cancel out straight away. And then we have an expression for the acceleration, which is A is equals to 0 0.7 g. So let's call this our equation two. Okay. So having found this, now we can move on to find the velocity. It starts decelerating. So we're going to use the, the third equation. Since we, we noticed that, we know the final velocity the system will have since it comes to rest. It does this in some displacement, six meters. And apart from that, we just found the deceleration or the retardation, which is 0 0.7 times gravity. Okay, and apart from that, we want to find the initial velocity of the system. Okay, so with this information, we should notice that this equation will work very well for us. Okay, so if we do the substitution and then also make uh, the term we want to find as the subject of the formula, we know this term is zero, so we're going to remove it from there. So now we have u squared is equals to negative 2as. Okay, so at this point now we're going to make our substitution. So we have u squared is equals to negative 2. Our acceleration is an expression of gravity, 0.7g. And then our s is 6 meters. Okay, now this is going to be u is equivalent to the square root of negative. Now you see the negative under the root. We see that it's going to be a problem. But then remember, gravity is a downward force and are taking up to be positive. So the negative is going to be dealt with when you bring in the factor of gravity. Okay, now from here, what we see is that we have u is equals to negative two, and then we have, so when we bring the negative from gravity by 9.8 by six. So we see that negatives go out and now we have a positive argument in the root. So if we evaluate that, so now we're looking at the square root of, okay, that's the square root of two by 0 0.7 by 9.8 by six. And then we're seeing 9.07 okay so we get the initial velocity as 9.07 so having found our initial velocity we go back to our equation one so if you recall what our equation one was so from our equation one we noticed that the velocity of car two initially is just twice the velocity of the system okay so we're just going to make that substitution we're going to make that substitution. So we were saying the final velocity, the initial velocity of car two is just twice the final velocity after collision. So remember this was our equation two. So we're just going to substitute since now we know, we know what our final velocity is. So this is two multiplying 9.07. And if we multiply here, so yeah, if we multiply 9.0, I'm using 0.1, okay, 0.7, 9.07, multiply this by two, and then we get 18.14. So we find our answer as 18.14 meters per second. Okay, so this is the expected answer that we're looking for. So having worked out question three, uh, I hope there are no questions. I hope there are no challenges here. But if you would like to me to clarify something, just comment in the description or get in touch with me via email. All right, so we can quickly move to question four. I think this is going to be the last one for the day. And then I'm going to post another video probably with time. Okay, so question four is talking about a bullet of mass 10 grams. Uh, traveling at a speed of 500 uh, meters per second. And then this, uh, this bullet strikes a block of mass 2 kg, which is suspended by a string of mass 5 meters. Uh, 
by a string of length five meters. The bullet goes through the block in a very short time. And the center of gravity of, of the block is found to rise a vertical distance of 10 centimeters. So the assumption here is that the bullet does really pass through the block in a very, very short period of time. That's the only reason, or the, that's the only reason why we're able to use uh, these concepts. So it, it's assumed that the bullet will pass through the block before the block starts to, to actually raise up. Okay, now what does this mean? So if we have our block, let me just try to, to create a picture of what is happening here. So this is our block. The bullet reaches the block and then leaves the block before the block even starts to go up. That's the assumption that we're making here. So with this, we need to first conserve momentum here. Now how do we do that? So we're saying before collision, we have, I'm going to use small letter B for the bullet and capital B for the block. So the mass of the bullet, multiplying the initial velocity of the bullet, added to the mass of the block, multiplying the initial velocity of the block. This is equivalent to the mass of the bullet, the final velocity of the bullet, plus the mass of the block, multiplying the final velocity of the block. Okay. Now, from what we're looking at, or from the question, we're given a number of, uh, of things to work with. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we're saying the mass of the block, of the bullet, sorry, it's 10 grams. So 10 grams in kgs. So this is going to be 0 0.01 kgs. And apart from that, the mass of the block is already in kgs. So that is just two kgs. And the initial velocity so that of the bullet, that's VBI, that's 500 meters per second. And apart from this, okay, I think this is basically everything that we're given. Yeah, we do have something else, do we? Okay, so we wanna have the distances from there. So I think for this equation, this is everything that we have. Okay, so initially the block is addressed. So V, B, I is equals to zero. So this makes the second term on the left hand side to be zero. So if we substitute this and see what we're now looking at. So we have 0 0.01, and then the velocity is 500. This is equivalent to um, the mass of the bullet again. So that is 0 0.01 multiplying the final velocity of the bullet, VB final, plus the mass of the block, which is two kgs, multiplying the velocity of the block after collision. Now, let's just make the one that we want to find the sub the formula so that we have something that we can easily just now uh, work out in the end. So I want to make the velocity of the bullet. That's what, that's what we want to find. The speed of the bullet after collision. That's what we want to find. So I'm going to move this term to the other side of the equal sign. So this is going to be, this is going to be 0. Point, is it? Yeah, I want to make the, the velocity of the bullet on the side of the formula. So it's going to be 0. Point, zero one bb final is equivalent to zero point zero one by five hundred minus two v block final okay then from here v bullet final is going to be equal to zero point zero one by five hundred minus two V block final over 0 0.01. Okay, now we notice that to find out the velocity of the bullet after collision, we need to first find this term here, which is the velocity of the block after collision. Now, this is where we have to take into account how high the block rises after collision. Okay, now how do we do that? So you see, for it to rise to that height, 
there is a gain of potential energy. Where does that potential energy come from? It comes from the initial kinetic energy the block gained after collision. So we are going to compare the energy the block will have after collision to the energy it will have after rising to that height. So here we're going to literally just conserve energy. So for the block after collision, let's say we have it somewhere here. Let's call this point A. Here we're saying everything here is happening after collision. So this is point A. And then after some time, it rises to some height somewhere there. Let's call it point B. So it's the energy at A. It must be equal to the energy at B. So what do we mean? I mean the kinetic energy at A plus the potential energy at A. This must be equal to the kinetic energy at B plus the potential energy at B. Okay. Now, what you should notice is initially at A, if we take that to be the reference point, it means that there was no potential energy. This is zero. And at B, the block comes to rest, implying that it will have no kinetic energy. So the term now, or the equation now, looks as Ke at A is equivalent to Pe at B. Okay. Now, if we substitute here, uh, plus our equations, so we're looking at half m v squared is equals to m g h. Now I'm using capital M here. Um, yeah, this is basically just the mass of the of the block. It doesn't really matter. So it will cancel from both sides. And then we know our height. The height from the question says the block goes up uh, 10 centimeters. So we can make v squared the subject of the formula. So V squared will now be equivalent to 2GH, or we can then say V is equals to the square root of 2GH, okay? So if we evaluated this, so that's the square root of 2G, uh, that's, that's 9.8. 9.8 h. Our uh, h is uh, 10 centimeters, which is 0 0.1. Okay, we get 1.4. Nice. Okay, so this becomes 1.4 meters. Now, if we look at what we found here, the velocity after collision, so now we're just going to insert it, let's say, in our equation one. So from here then, uh, so that we can see just somewhere here, so V B final must then be equal to 0 0.1 by 500 minus two by 1.4 over 0 0.01. Okay, let's see what we get. So it's 1.4 by two. Okay, we get 2.8 here. And then the other side, we have 0 0.01 by 500, we get 5 here over 0 0.01. Then we have 5 minus 2.8, we get 2.2. So now we have 2.2 over 0 0.01. So, so uh, yeah, that's okay. 2.2, not 2.8. Yeah, so this is 2.2 over 0 0.01. Then divide this by 0 0.01. As expected, we get 220 meters per second. Okay, so let's minimize this. Yeah, so basically, this is what was expected of us. This is the velocity of the bullet before collision. Yeah, so, and yeah, the final velocity, the velocity of the bullet after collision. Okay, yeah. All right, so this is our final answer to question four from the tutorial sheet.
All right, so that's it for today. If you still have any questions from our calculations, just uh, get in touch, comment. And um, if you, there are any other questions that you'd like me to work out to work out for you, which are not part of the tour sheet, just send an email or um, just place hashtag suggestion and then type them there. All right, thank you very much. Um, see you next time, please.